All right, so today we are going to do some more review. You can tell it's getting close to the end of the year, huh? Yep, it's going fast. So today's lesson, you're going to have to go to math. Math is down at the bottom right above your homework. And today is Wednesday, so it is under math review. Today we're going to practice our math skills. Actually, you're going to see that learning target a lot in the next couple weeks because I've taught you almost all of the third grade math skills. Now we just need to get really good at them. We're going to practice them so that we are ready for fourth grade math, right? So we'll use our strategies to answer selected response questions, just like we did in reading, but with math, we'll use problem solving strategies and we're going to want to use technology tools correctly. I want to just tell everybody that I'm really proud of how you did on your test yesterday. You really showed me all that you've learned and you did great. So congratulations. We have not talked a lot about problem solving. We have done some problem solving, but we haven't looked at this poster in a while. I thought it would be helpful for today's lesson. When we come across a word problem, we have to read the problem. I know we were talking about it today, Madison, that we need to use our reading skills in math, right? You guys are great readers. Use those skills when you come across those math problems. Visualize what the text is saying, then retell it. Then look for those clues to determine those relationships. We're gonna draw pictures and we're gonna try to figure out the answers, find the unknown. But most importantly, reflect if you do not reflect you will not catch your mistakes right sometimes it's like what the answer can't be two that makes no sense at all but if you never think about it you'll never catch that mistake all right we're gonna use scroll bars today we're also gonna look at the arrow keys we're gonna use the review button the bookmark you can use answer eliminator same type of thing with the math practice. So for my second graders, when you go to the review button, you will see that you can see if it is yellow next to the question, that means you have not answered it. If it has a blue bookmark by it, it means you need to go back to it and answer it. So that's what that review button is for. Answer eliminator, you just can click on it, it will get rid of the answers that you know are not right. I will show you this as we work today. But to get rid of it, you have to click back on it. Okay, so we are gonna go back to look in our Google Classroom. You will see the link again, but this time we're not gonna go to English Language Arts. We're not gonna sign in, Reese, Henry, and Katie, we're gonna not sign in. You go below the sign in and you go to practice tests. Once you go there, you're gonna click on math. Once you go to math, you'll go to grade three, which is on the left-hand side. And I'll go over this again for my second graders who have not done this yet. You are gonna see that there are computer-based practice tests at the very top, unit one, two, three, and four. We're going to click on which one? one? Unit one. Do we write our name here? No. no, you are a guest. And then you will see the start button. Now, on your dry erase board, we're going to solve some of these problems. We're not going to do these. You guys will do these. But I just want to show you the tools. This says, which two statements can be represented by the expression four times eight? Some of those words might sound a little unfamiliar to you because I don't talk that way when I teach. I don't say expression four times eight. All that means is it's like synonymous with the word equation, right? It's like an equation, which is four times eight, three times six, two plus four, and so forth. So when you have when you look at these problems today, be careful. Do you notice how it says which two statements can be represented by the expression four times eight. It's even in bold. So 
Katie, Henry, and Reese, if you read a teacher puts eight chairs at each of four tables and you don't think that goes with this one, you can click on the X and X it out. If you don't think it's those three, but then you change your mind, you just go back up to answer eliminator, click on it again, and you can unclick, hopefully, let's see. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Click off of it. Once you're in it, you can click off of it. Do you see how I did that? You can also go back to the pointer so you're not using it. On this one, you have a ruler. Do you guys see that? Look, if you click on the inch ruler, you have a ruler. You can even move it around because you might have to measure something. So that's here. When you want to get rid of the ruler, you just click back on to that. If I want to get rid of this, I got to go back to answer eliminator and click it again, and it will be go away. Then I can click back to the pointer so nothing's clicked. So I will go over this. I'm not going to talk about this one because that one I think you guys can do. I'm not going to, this one, you're just going to click on the box and put your answer. Can you do that in your head? Yeah. No. no, the answer is no, 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 no. You need to rewrite that on your dry erase board. You need to stack it. Then you need to solve it the way I've taught you. If you do that in your head, you're going to get it wrong. Okay, you haven't practiced it enough yet at this age to be able to do that. Okay, next one. This one's pretty straightforward. You're going to be working on these independently or with a partner. Gwen pours about three liters of water into a container. Select the arrow that shows about how much water Gwen poured into the container. Look at what you do. You just click on the arrow. And that's pointing to the line, right? So you click only one of them that you think is showing about, it's a key word there, it's not gonna be exact, about three liters of water. So Reese and Katie and Henry, I keep going up to these arrows at the top to get to the next problem. Did you notice that? Yeah, cool. All right. This one we are gonna do together because what I want you to notice, Evie, this is number four, but it has three parts. Do you guys see that? We have A, B, and C. So I wanna make sure when you are doing problems like this, you don't forget to scroll down. Once you see part A, you know that means there's a part B most likely there's going to be a part C. All right, so let's do this one together. Nolan has 16 pennies in one jar and 94 pennies in another jar. He uses some of the pennies to buy a pencil that costs 95 or 95, 25 cents. What is the total number of pennies Nolan has left after he buys the pencil? Show your work. Enter your answer and your work in the space provided. So what I have to do, this is different than anything we've done before. I have to click in the box. I notice there are some math symbols to the right. I know that if Nolan has 16 pennies in one jar and 94 pennies in another jar, I'm gonna do what, Lennox? eventually, but I'm not buying the pencils yet. First, I got to know how much what? In, in all. How do we find that? Madison, how do we find out how much in all? We put them what? And we, we have to add them. So on my computer, now this is super duper important. I have to write 16 and then look at what I get to do. I hit plus it comes up for me, plus 94, right? I can even hit the equals and then it gives me a box. Now, can I do that in my head? Even if you think you can, I don't want you to. I want you to want to do the best that you can. 
So go ahead and stack it. It's very hard to stack on the computer. So I'm gonna write it horizontally. And then whether you have scratch paper or a dry erase board, you'll have scratch paper during the test, but right now you have a dry erase board. Go ahead and write it horizontally. I mean, vertically, it's horizontal on your computer. Write it vertically up and down, stack it. And then let's see how you do with solving it. Hold up the answer once you have it. I see Astria has figured it out. I see that Elena's done the work. Try again, my dear. Good job, good job. Don't need a comma if you're not in the thousands place. Try again. Okay. I'm gonna see if it'll let me write on the board. I'm thinking it's not gonna let me. Oh, look at that. My lucky day. It must be my birthday. <laughs> All right. What is your birthday? Oh, that's all summer. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let's see. Finn, how would I add this up? What do I get? So it equals 110. And then I'm going to put that in the box. So now I know that Nolan has 110 pennies. I'm going to even put in my unit. Did you? So it won't always let you do that, but if it lets you, do it. That shows how smart you are and that you truly understand what you're talking about. So now we know Nolan has 110 pennies. Now, Lennox, I think you were jumping ahead, right? He uses some of the pennies to buy a pencil that costs 25 cents. You didn't see the 16 right away, so now you get it? That's why we read carefully, right? Because sometimes those things disappear. What is the total number of pennies Nolan has left after he buys the pencils? So on my computer, what am I gonna type, Lennox? Um, How much is the pencil? Pencil costs 25. Now, am I gonna just try to answer that? Nope, I want you to, if you make a mistake, you can hit backspace, oh, by the way, or there's a trash can, or there's an undo, or there's a redo. Yep, all right, so go ahead and stack it on your boards. Hold it up when you have the answer. Now we're gonna say 110 minus 25. Be careful that you line up into your ones, your tens, and your hundreds. I've noticed some of us have gotten a little sloppy with that. It will change your answer. Okay, now make sure you don't say zero minus five is, is five. Make sure you solve it. Okay. Astria, how would I solve this? You have to cross out the zero, cross out the one, and then you have to make the um, one a zero. Make so. Um, zero is 10. Right? Zero is 10, and then the other one a uh, 10. Okay, what's 10 minus 5? Five? 5. Can I do zero minus 2? No. Cross out the one. And 10 minus 8 is... 10 minus 2. 10 minus 2 is 8. All right. So now we know that Nolan has 85 pennies. So I'm going to write 85 pennies. Get that unit in there. So now, did I enter my answer and my work? Yep, I sure did. 
but I'm not done. Nolan saved some more pennies and now has 187 pennies all in one jar. Okay, so now he has 187 pennies. He finds 10 more pennies in his pocket. What is the total number of pennies Nolan has after he adds the 10 pennies from his pocket to the jar? So he has 187 and then he finds 10 more. What am I gonna do on my board, Lucas? How do I know how many he has? If he has 187 in one jar and he finds 10 more, what is the total number he has after, and it even tells you what to do, after he adds the 10 pennies? 187 plus 10, go ahead and do it. Hold up your answer when you have it. I see you, Haley, Calendar. Ben, how you doing? I see you, Reese. Look at all that hard work, Reese. I'm so proud of you. Hey, Reese, do you want to walk us through it? Tell us what you got and why. For some reason, we can't hear you, Reese. I see you unmuted. Is your volume on? Yeah. I know you got the right answer, though. I just came from there, and they were all doing it on the board. Yeah, That's she fine. did a great job. You want to try again, see if we can hear you? Say hello, Mrs. Allen. Yeah. OK, so that's OK, Reese. I know you're on task. Do you want to try? What's 187 plus 10, Mr. Bowers? Um, so you, seven plus zero equals seven. Eight plus one equals nine. And one plus zero equals one. Hi. So that, Excellent. Thank you for reading it so clearly. Now watch, guys. For this one, if I wanted to write 197 pennies, it won't let me. So if it doesn't let you, don't panic. That's okay. Just write 197. Did that make sense? All right. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. We're not done yet. Do you see? Be careful. This is all part of number four. There's three parts. Be sure to scroll down because when you go to the review and it says you didn't answer number four, that'll be because you forgot one of the parts. All right, let me erase what I have and read this part. This table shows the number of pennies Nolan saved each week for four weeks. What is the total number of pennies Nolan saved during the four weeks? Show your work. Now, if he saved 18 pennies in week one, 40 pennies in week two, 32 pennies in week three, and 25 pennies in week four, I want to know how many he saved all together. What do I need to do, Sawyer? We're trying to find out if Nolan saved 18 pennies in one week, 40 in week two, 32 pennies in week three, and 25 in week four. If he saved all of those pennies, how many, or what is the total number of pennies Nolan saved during the four weeks? How would I figure that out? Okay, so he's saying I'm going to add. So you're saying add 18 to 40 first? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and do it, guys. Start adding. You figure it out your own way. So he got you started. You could do that. You might want to add different numbers first. 
You know you want to add them all together in some way. How are you going to get started? That's not the answer though, right? Just because you can add 40 and 18, is that the answer? You've got to add all these numbers together somehow. Sawyer's going to start with 18 plus 40. What are you going to do? Somehow you're adding 18. Plus 32, plus 25. You could add it up like that if you wanted. Or you could add 18 plus 40. Take that answer and add that to 32. Take that answer and add that to 25. However you like to work. How does your brain work? There's no wrong way of doing it unless you're subtracting or multiplying the device, right? <laughs> if you're adding, you can add them however it makes sense in your brain. Ah, let's see. I see a lot of the same answers. Wow, Sawyer, you're on it. Sawyer, I'm going to have you finish. Don't erase your work. Your work's what's important here. Okay, Sawyer, talk us through it. Let's go back to 18 plus 40. What did you get? 58. Then you added 58 to 32. I got 90. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. Plus 3 is 9. 90 plus 25. One hundred fifteen. So you might say, okay, I know the answer, but how do I show that in the space provided? Let me show you. You have to go horizontally across, right? So just what you did. If you're Sawyer and you did 18, and you started with 18 plus 40 equals 58. You might have to help me, Sawyer. And then you did 58 plus 32 equals 90, right? See, and I'm just hitting the enter button to get to that. Then if you said 90, plus 25, this is how you show it. You can't show it the way we do it. 115, and then can I say pennies? Yeah, it'll let me. That tells my reader that that's the final answer. Now, maybe you didn't do it that way. I saw this on some of your boards, 18 plus 40, plus 32, plus 25 equals 115 pennies. Would that work? Yeah, that works. If, if you did it another way, can you just show how you did it? Yeah, Robert. So you would just write those numbers. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, guys. Now look, that was number four. We had A, B, and C. Make sure. So if I go to the review, it says that I did it, right? I did answer it. So because I did do all of them. Because I didn't do those. All right, you will see something like this. This just asks you to select three correct answers. Do you notice that there's not most of these, Evie? Evie, don't do that, please. Most of these do not have just one answer. 
A lot of them have multiple. How am I going to find that, Marin? What do I look for? Which shows, which show one, four, one out of four. I have, there's three answers. The way I'm going to know that is because it's in bold and I'm going to read the directions, right? I'm not going to do that one because you guys can do that. You guys can do that one. You can do this one. Now this one's asking you to plot a point on the number line. Evie, whole body listening, honey. Put your board away, watch. Plot a point on the number line that shows the location of eight eights. You click on it and that's all you do. That's the wrong answer, by the way. That's not eight eights. So to unclick, oh, it's not unclicking. You just gotta go to a different one, okay? That's the wrong answer as well. All right, this one has two answers, okay? So you'll do what I did. And this one's a puzzled penguin. Let's look at this a little bit. Cindy is finding the quotient, and hopefully you remember that's the answer to a division problem. If you see a word like that, don't panic. Just see if you can figure it out. Finding the quotient for 27 divided by nine. She says the answer is 18 because addition is the opposite of division. And nine plus eight equals 27. This is a puzzle penguin, you guys. You do the same thing you would with puzzle penguin. Identify the incorrect reasoning in Cindy's statement. Enter your explanation in the space provided. Then it tells you down here, just like a puzzle penguin, show or explain how Cindy can correct her reasoning. Find the quotient when 27 is divided by nine. Enter your answer and your work or explanation in the space provided. So think of this one as a puzzle penguin. No, Cindy is wrong because is addition the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiplication is the opposite of, a, of division, not addition. She should have, and then down here, she should have said 27 divided by nine is blah, blah, blah. Use your keypad to type, you just, you just click on the box and then you can type, see? You, but we want to undo that because it doesn't make sense. That's what it is. puzzle penguin language. Yeah, puzzle penguin language. All right, you will also see some basic computation. You guys can draw a picture, use your tools, and you just enter your answers. Yes. You're not gonna do the one we've already done, okay. no. All right, this one also has two sections. You guys can work on that. And I wanted to show you on this number, this one's interesting. If you read the directions, you'll be fine, but I'm just gonna show you so you really understand it. It asks you to use the more or fewer buttons as many times as needed to divide the circle into six equal parts. Then shade one sixth of the area of the circle. Divide the figure into the correct number of equal parts by using the more and fewer buttons. Then shade by selecting the part or parts. Right now you might be saying, what button? What do I have to do to find it? What is, I need to scroll. Look, it's right there. But I can't tell you how many times kids have raised their hands and said, what buttons, Mrs. Um, and I can't say anything. So scroll, move it if you can't find. So watch what happens when you click more. Divides into thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, eighths. I can reset it and it goes back. I can go back to more. If I did too many, I can hit fewer. Now watch, so if I, if it said divided into thirds and then shade one third, you just click on it. But say I click too many. Oh no, I was only supposed to do one. I click on it again, it will come off, okay? So that's how you do that one. 
This one's basic, follow the directions. And oh, there was a different one. I thought, that's funny. It's not there now. The one with the area, huh? How did that happen? Well, okay. There was one on area and it's not there. All right, so we are gonna let you do, so should I have them write it down? That's what I just, or is it okay? They can just practice it. Yeah, okay. Do we want to do it independent or? Well, that might be best. See how they yeah, let's do that because we did so much last time and I think we need a break from that. All right, I'm gonna let you work on this independently. I will be right here, my remote learner. So if you have questions, just say Mrs. Aubin because I'll be roaming around the room here as well, helping kids. Just make sure, uh, second graders, you might want to watch again how to get here. And I can go help you. And Mrs. Harrison might come help you here. It's under math, Wednesday math review. You're going to go to the sign in test nav. You click on that. Click on practice test. Don't sign in actually. Go to mathematics. Grade three, unit one, you hit start. You hit start again. You don't type your name in. You can skip the one we did together of the pennies with Nolan, okay? Yep. And then work on these, see how you do. I'm gonna give you a few minutes then we'll go over them. Quite a few minutes. Unit one. If anybody has questions, let me know. Guys, I just was asked, is it unit one or unit two? It's unit one. Hey, 
Okay, another just reminder. Make sure you look at the operation. Are you adding or subtracting? Well, if you're adding adds, but if it has the subtraction symbol, don't rush to get two, right? Make sure you double check, be careful. You want to show off everything you learn. my dear.
Okay, well, now you can check it. I'm proud of you. You worked hard. All right, guys, we're going to see how we did. So let's see. There's my email. That's not what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to see. Hopefully, you'll remember what you chose. All right, eyes up here. It's okay if you didn't finish. Ah, it's okay. You got the feel of it. That makes me happy. I think so far, looks like you guys did great. We'll find out at the end how what you thought was difficult, what you thought was easy. So which two statements can be represented by the expression four times eight? Cooper, which two did you choose? And you can go back and look at your screen. Where's Cooper? There you are. Yeah, I guess I can click on it, not right on it. So we had a teacher puts eight chairs at each of four tables. Would that be the same as four groups of eight or eight groups of four? Yeah, that's one of them. You should have gotten A. The problem with that one that made it tricky, I think that Elena and I were talking about, is they used commutative property. Because really that's not four groups of eight, but it is eight groups of four. And isn't that still 32? It's still gonna be 32, right? Okay, Cooper, what about B? Would that be one of them? Tom buys four red markers and eight black markers. No, why not? What is that? Addition, all right. Marie shares her eight marbles equally among four friends. Division, not multiplication. There are four rows of flowers. There are eight flowers in each row. That's four groups of eight. There are eight ducks in the pond, then four more ducks join them. That's gonna be addition. You should have gotten A and D. How'd we do? Huh? Good. That one was confusing because they flipped it around. They flipped around the eight and the four. But if you use process of elimination, you wouldn't, you might have been able to figure it out that way. All right, let's look at enter your answer. 746 minus 397. Ah, I'm trapped. Make sure you get this. Did you stack it? Now, what happens if you did addition? Yeah. You're going to get it wrong, right? It makes sense. It makes sense, would it? Right? So look at that operation. Can't do six minus seven. Cross out that three, make a new group of 10. 16 minus seven is nine. Three minus nine, you can't do. Make a new group, you have 13 minus nine, which is four, and six minus three is three. You should have typed in 349. If you did not, if you did not stack it, you may have gotten that wrong. So please stack it and practice, or checking, practice checking your work. 349. All right, this one was tricky. I think it was Elaine and I on that one too. She said, wait a minute, this arrow is not at the three. That's because Gwen pours about three liters. So you got to find three liters and get the arrow closest to it. This is the closest arrow. If you chose the one above it, it's a little further from the three. It's two sections uh, higher. This one's only one little section below. So because you want to get as close to three liters, you should have picked the second arrow. Haley, did you get it? Miss Calendar, did you get that one? Cool. Reese got it. Ben, did you do okay on that one? That was tricky. That word about.
Okay, we already did this one. We're gonna skip that. This one was pretty easy, right? A, B, C, D, E, and F. There's three you had to get. Three of those, Leo, what were they? Which three showed one fourth? A, C, and E. A, C, and E. Does anyone disagree? No one disagrees. Okay, good. Cade has four boxes. He puts nine model cars in each box. What is the total number of model cars Cade put in these boxes? Sunny, what is it? It just says answer, put the answer. But can you write? You can't even write the unit. So 36, how did you know? She used a nice trick. If you weren't sure what to do, you could have drawn a picture. Four boxes, nine in each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or you would have seen nine plus nine plus nine, or that's four groups of Nine. Nine. Nice if you didn't know what to do, Sawyer, draw a picture, right? Did you get that one? How'd we do on that one? Four times nine equals 36. Awesome. I think a big part of it is recognizing when to multiply, when to add, when to subtract, when to divide. Okay, this one's a fun one. So another, I think it was Elena. She was my best friend during math today. <laughs> She's like, wait, this is in ninths. Because what you do, you counted what? Uh, I counted nine. She counted that zero. It's not in ninths, it was in eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you should have marked the one, right? Eight divided by eight is eight, is one. Eight eighths is the same as one whole. If you started at the zero and counted, you would have found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. This one was the trickiest one. You had to do some writing. I saw some people only write equations and they were very willing to go back and fix that. But remember when I said it's a puzzle penguin, I've always with puzzle penguin made you write in words. It's just like an exit ticket. So Cindy is finding the quotient for 27 divided by nine. She says the answer is 18 because addition is the opposite of division. And nine plus 18 equals 27. Identify the correct, the incorrect reasoning in Cindy's statement. Enter your explanation in the space provided. So she is wrong because, and you can do, you don't have to change yours. This is just an example because multiplication is the opposite of division, not addition, right? And then down here is where it says, show or explain how Cindy can correct her reasoning. Find the quotient, which is the answer, when 27 is divided by nine. Enter your answer and your work or explanation in the space provided. So here, I would say three times nine equals 27. So 27 using my math symbols divided by nine equals what? Three. That's how you can solve it. Use multiplication to answer it, not addition. All right. Hopefully you separated the two. Read the directions so you know where to write. If it says explain, you need to use words, but this said show or explain. 
But this one said to explain. So I told Max, right? Fox, we talked about if it says explanation, you use words. Okay. All right, we're not going to go through all of these because of time. You should have used your nines trick and your chance and so forth. And I'm not going to have time to do this, but I hope you know that it was more than one step, right? If he started with this many, he bought some. He's going to add those to it. Then he sells some. He's going to subtract those, right? And then if he has six packages, of, we could look at this tomorrow maybe. This is a good one, number 10. I might make note of that. Maybe I'll start with that one tomorrow. So we have two two-step word problems that really are unique and different. All right, last one. You should uh, have gotten to six. And then you should have just shaded one of those. How'd we do? Yeah. All right, and this one we can look at tomorrow as well. So overall, FISTA 5, how did you feel about your skills and your strategies and your, not right now, and your tools? Give me one minute. How'd we do? FISTA 5, want to stop sharing so I can see everybody? Hold on.